Good morning. Good morning. Oh, come on, folks. <laughs> it may be a little damp outside, but y'all can, y'all need to wake up. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that was so much better. Don't you feel better after that? <laughs> Good morning, and welcome to Covenant Community Church on our worship on this Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. Uh, thank you for joining us, those of you in person, all of those you join online, uh, either by uh, Facebook live stream or by Zoom. We thank you for joining us for worship. We are Covenant Community Church, a United Church of Christ congregation that proudly proclaims no matter who you are or where you're on life's journey, you're always welcome here. Let me just inform you the reason I'm wearing this thing today is I have a sinus infection. That is, I've been, uh, this is the first day I've really sounded normal. I've had a very Butch voice the last three uh, Deep voice. I, I was hitting low notes when I was singing. But out of abundance of caution, so none of you think I'm contagious. I'm wearing this when I'm around people today, okay? Uh, the peace of the Lord be with you. Let us rise and greet one another in peace.
are the people of God who live as the people of hope. Therefore, let us declare it so this morning in our covenant affirmation. I am a child of God. I celebrate God's Holy Spirit coming into my life. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I accept God's Spirit and power to inspire me, guide me, and motivate me to be a witness of the gospel, offering hope, showing faithfulness, and sharing joy. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. If you're viewing by live stream, uh, please give us a thumbs up so we know that you're there. And also, if you'd like to join us later for communion, please grab something to represent the, the bread and the juice for that time. Uh, special announcement. I'm making a special announcement about the uh, Kabbalah Shabbat service at Temple Bethel on January the 20th. Uh, the first 10 dinners are uh, for covenant. Uh, someone is paid for, they're $10 a piece. Uh, the, the menu that night is garden fresh bread. Uh, I mean, uh, garden fresh salad. <laughs> <laughs> garden fresh salad, uh, southern uh, chicken pot pie, orange honey glazed carrots, homemade apple cake, and sliced challah, which means bread, sliced bread. Uh, and so uh, if you have any questions, you can see me. Uh, we have one more free dinner available. You'll have to let, uh, after that, it'll be $10 a person, and you'll have to go online and celebrate. The first 10 people have already been registered, uh, but we have one free dinner left. So you need to see Jennifer if you want to go to the, uh, get, claim that last free dinner. After that, it's $10 a person. Still not a lot. It's a combination of the uh, of uh, Temple Bethel, uh, South, uh, South Highland Presbyterian Church, Baptist Church of the Covenant, Covenant and Pilgrim is having an interfaith service together to get to uh, know more about each other. So dinner starts at, I mean, the service starts at 545, 545, and then dinner to follow at 7 o'clock. And uh, so thank you. And uh, <coughs> Her name is Judy, isn't it? it is. Judy has a special Still, really. Still is. Did she say that? I know where you live. Hi. Uh, for the last three years, uh, we've had a hiatus at, at Glenn's Reading Room. You know, a lot of things were suspended over the last three years for various reasons. One of the things that we do best at Covenant, in my opinion, is that we take the vocabulary uh, that has come down to us in our faith tradition, uh, much of which the church has misinterpreted and the church has mishandled and the church has made into something restrictive and even, even hurtful to us sometimes. And we at Covenant, as part of JR's teaching and sermon, sermons, uh, we relearn the meaning of those words, looking at them through the prism of Jesus' life and Jesus' teaching. And another the way that we do that is through Glenn's Reading Room, which is our reading group ministry. We read authors together and we discuss together. We don't choose difficult authors. They're not um, highly scholastic or hard to read, but the ideas are challenging and they're deep. And they help us to shift our perspective in a way to know even more how accepted we are and how welcoming we need to be and are as a church. So we're resuming Glenn's Reading Room at the first of next month. Uh, we'll be meeting on first and third Saturdays. We're going to meet at Mining Christopher's house in Center Point, and also this time we'll be meeting by Zoom. And um, so you're welcome to attend either way, first and third Saturdays at 2. Uh, on the lit table out there are these little postcard size cards that have the general information on it about how to get onto the email list, to, to get information as we go forward. But also, if you'd like to mention to me today that you're interested, just tell me, and I have the full information about the next book that we'll be reading here. And we'll be happy to give that to you. And just for to take one more second, the next book is, re, is Speaking of Sin. Talk about a word that needs to be redeemed. That word needs to be redeemed, and this book does it for you. So let me know that you're interested. I'll make sure you get all the information. Thank you. 
Thank you. Please join us for life lessons on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We're studying Psalm 23, Reducing Stress, and we're on Part 6b, God's Antidote to Your Hurt. Also, Sundays, we have Lighthouse at 1030 in person and on Zoom, and we're studying the Book of Acts. The Covenant Library is open. Please come by and check out the wide variety of books. Um, please, when you're buying your groceries, please remember the food pantry for the houseless that um, we provide, and um, there's a box in the foyer, and in the foyer is also a box um, for the blessing box, the food stand, the freestanding food pantry, um, and non-perishable items that you can share with people in need. I went by this week. Um, it was completely empty. I had never seen it completely empty. Um, not a bag of rice in there. But Covenant had come through, and we filled it back up. So thank you, Covenant, and please continue to give to those in need. We have birthdays this week. James Roberts is January 9th. Randy Wilson is January 9th. Keith Carriker is January 13th, and Sandy Dodson is January 14th. Let's wish them a happy birthday. Amen. Let us continue. your prayer request or praise report in the comment section or chat section, whichever is appropriate. We begin our times, if you would like for us to put it on the prayer list, church prayer list, then email it to the church and we'll add it to the church prayer list. We always begin with our praise reports. I want to praise God for my sister Lua. I was visit. She's going to be leaving Tuesday, flying home. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we want to, uh, oh, Ronnie had a great uh, prayer, uh, praise report. His friend that we've been praying for, Keith Haynes, was in need of a kidney transplant. He got the kidney transplant and is doing well. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> um, also, uh, I got word that um, uh, Nona sent word that uh, Bobby had gotten the stitches out, everything went well. Her back surgery is completely healing itself, and she is doing well. So we thank God for that. Amen. <laughs> and then um, this, what was it? I guess it was Friday, uh, maybe you all know. I got a call from someone named Bobby Caldwell, and I was asked to participate in the White House National Strategy on Discrimination. And so we thank God. <laughs> uh, 
wherever that came from. It, oh, his name was Bobby Caldwell, yes. And, uh, and so, you know, sometimes we forget we make a difference in this world. You know, small don't mean insignificant. Amen? And so we thank God for that. Anybody else with a quick... Yes, uh, John. her surgery was this week it was last Thursday she's at home doing well uh, the surgery went well she's doing well and that she but she has to get up every two hours to walk and, and she ain't happy about that <laughs> but in the long run that's gonna be a good thing amen amen, amen. anyone else praise uh, prayer requests Luana is having surgery tomorrow uh, to hernia surgery tomorrow. Wes has got upcoming foot surgery. Uh, it's got to get scheduled. My sister Lillian asked us to keep her friend Gavin Wilder uh, open heart surgery and also Karen Swiller who is having, had to have her arm, having to have her arm repaired because she fell through a pothole in the, in the street. Uh, and so keep them in prayer. Uh, Thomas and Jay, Tom and James Velasquez I sent a, a prayer request for their great niece, Coraline Thomas, who's two months old, and she's got RSV and COVID. And so, uh, two months old. So please remember, I got a call yesterday evening from my cousin, uh, Ethel, our cousin, Ethel uh, Johnson, and uh, her brother, William. And I didn't tell you about that, did I? William has been taken back to the hospital. Uh, back to the nursing home uh, he's had several seizures and so forth and each time it's more difficult so keep him in prayer as well and of course for Lula's flight home anyone else yes quickly uh, Carlsville is having a, a really bad cold or something he was able to zoom in your lighthouse today but he is not feeling well Carlos here Okay. Yes. Huh? Right. So, uh, one of our best friends, her and her fiance, Ronnie's daughter, is in critical condition. She woke up last Wednesday morning, stumbled, fell through the coffee table. She had um, meningitis where it was the infection of the brain. They opened her brain up. She's still swelling. Can you can you give me the full details of that so I can put it on the page so that we can put it on the list of, of us uh, Wednesday? Yes. So you can see that I get the details. Okay, so can we so be on our prayer list for this week? Yes, uh, Kelly. Travel mercies. Okay. If y'all will make sure I get the details of this, because on Sunday I'm not going to remember this. Y'all know this, right? So let me put them in the book. Write them in the book, and then uh, she will get them to me this week to put them on the Let's go to God in prayer. Is there any unspoken uh, un, uh, prayer request you'd like for us to remember this morning? Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, you are the eternal source of our very being. So we begin our prayer time right now, Lord, just uh, offering praise and thanksgiving. Because we're grateful for hearing of the blessings and the healings and the moments of grace that you have brought forth in the lives of your children. We rejoice with them and for them. But we also remember that the scripture tells us to come boldly before the throne of grace so we may find mercy and help in our time of need. So that's what we're doing also in this moment as we lift our prayer requests, spoken and unspoken. 
the writer of Psalms 29 ends that great psalm saying, may God give strength to God's people. May God bless God's people with peace. And that's our prayer today. For these needs that are great among your children. We also ask that you touch and heal and make whole places in our lives we're not even aware of. That's been damaged and hurt and terribly in need of your touch, your healing power, and your grace. We still believe you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask the thing. And so in this moment, God, we say as the songwriter said, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. And while on others thou art gone, do not pass me by. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. statement that God is still speaking and never put a period where God has put a comma. It brought me back to a few weeks ago when one of our board members gave the offertory and she said how long she had been a member of this church and it goes back to God is still speaking because she's still here today echoing God's message to Covenant. Amen. And I would love for years down the road that someone would be standing here still echoing what God is speaking in my place. Amen. Last year, I retired after two careers, one in the military, one in education. And Carolyn and I, we wanted a beach house and we wanted to leave the great state of Alabama <laughs> and we wanted to just live our lives. And then the first thing we discussed, we looked at each other and said, but where would we go to church? Yeah. Where would we have church friends? Where would we feel the love for my pastor who's still 29 years old? <laughs> <laughs> and it's because of covenant and the love that we feel that we chose to stay here. Amen. It was, <laughs> it was the right decision and because of that, we financially support Covenant, and we do it generously and cheerfully. I know what God has done for us through Covenant, and it needs to be multiplied many times over for others in the community. 
If you already support Covenant, we thank you, thank you, and thank you. If you don't, please consider doing so in prayer for the new year. You'll find on the screen our website and Facebook pages, Secure Ways to Give, and you can always give generously uh, through those sites. If you are here in person, we have the offering plate outside the doors of the sanctuary, so please give generously. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for your love. Thank you for the friendship, fellowship, and sense of family we have here at Covenant. Bless Covenant to branch out, reaching our communities in greater ways in this new year. Bless Covenant with resources to help our community to come to know your unconditional love, forgiveness, and acceptance. Multiply these gifts to your service and our community's benefits, and always and also bless each giver, as well as those I'm able to give right now. In Christ's name, amen. 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 from Acts 10, 34 through 35, and 44 through 48. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every people, anyone who revere God and practices righteousness is acceptable, acceptable to God. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers, the Jewish followers of the way, who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So Peter ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited Peter to stay for several days. Please rise in spirit and stand as you are able for the good news from the Gospel of Matthew 3, 13 through 17. 
Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the at the Jordan to be baptized by John. John would have prevented Jesus, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered John, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as Jesus came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to Jesus, and Jesus saw God's Spirit descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from the heaven said, This is my child, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the word of God. Praise be to God. Sunday of uh, the, I better stay here since I don't have the microphone on. Do I? Uh, it's the second Sunday of the year of 2023. Liturgically, today is known as Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. As you probably can tell from the scripture that uh, Anna just read from Matthew, the third chapter. It's always observed on the first Sunday after January 6th, which of course is the day of Epiphany and is considered the last day or the 12th day of Christmas. The day of Epiphany signals the end of the Christmas season, which I noticed this week because of the readings that came to me, has interesting significance. Christmas Day starts with God bursting forth into humanity for the Jewish people, Jesus being uh, born on Christmas Day. The 12th day of Christmas, God burst forth for everybody else as well. As the Magi arrive to visit the Christ child on that day. Now I said the first day of Christmas and the 12th day of Christmas because we don't really think it was actually December 25th and January 6th uh, because they didn't have 12 months in the calendar back then. But the man child represent to me as I looked at it this week an overlooked aspect of Christmas that Christmas story that's highlighting in that baptism story that Anna read by, about in the 10th chapter of Acts. It's a story of inclusion that Judy was talking about. It's a story illustrative of what I mean when I say in the welcome every Sunday morning at worship, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here. It may sound like a nice cliche, but it's based on the reality of Scripture. And we see it reflected in the Scriptures Anna read this morning, especially Acts 10, where Peter says to anoint all those non-Jewish people at Cornelius' house, when God used, had to use extraordinary means to even get Peter to go to this house, to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. And so on this first Sunday after the Epiphany, this baptism of the Lord's Sunday, let's take a moment and think about it. Baptism, no partiality. Baptism, no partiality. Let's pray. God, I thank you for this day and I thank you for the word. I thank you for the scriptures this morning, Lord. As it is spoken to me this week, I pray that I'm able to allow you to speak through me, that it might speak to those who hear, that we may hear, understand, and receive with gladness the 
good news that you have for our lives, that it will make a difference as we go forth in 2023. For we pray it in Christ's name, and all God's children said, Amen. God's children said, what? Amen. All God's children said, Amen. 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 Y'all excuse me, this ain't recipe, this is just water. <laughs> Amen. I know that Christmas is over, and I said that a few, but I mentioned a few moments ago about the Magi. And the reason I wanted to come back to that because I think there is something from the Magi's visit to Jesus that is an important connection to the baptism of Jesus. And since this is the baptism of our Lord Sunday, I thought I'd make that connection. Amen? Amen. You know, there is so much misunderstanding about the Magi in this birth of Jesus narrative. Most of us know about the Magi. We didn't really read any scripture. We know about it from that song that we sang, you know, we three kings of Orient are. First of all, the Bible doesn't tell us how many kings. Magi there was. We assume it was three because there were three gifts given. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. It could have just been just two magi and they brought three different gifts. Or it could have been several magi and bought a lot of gold, a lot of myrrh, and a lot of frankincense. I like that concept, don't you? <laughs> We just don't know. And of course, the big misunderstanding, of course, that always gets me, is this magi in these Christmas nativity scenes. They were not there that first Christmas. It was two years. History tells it was two years after. That's why it always kills me. You see the birth, you know, a nativity scene in three magi. They were not there. I know that bust some of y'all's bubbles, <laughs> but it just didn't happen that way. Now, here's what happened. The confusion comes when we take Matthew's narrative of the birth of Jesus and Luke's narrative of the birth of Jesus, because uh, Mark and John doesn't have a birth narrative in it, and we try to make them into one story. And that's where, and then you try to have to make all these weird pieces fit when they don't fit. And they don't conflict either. The reality is that Matthew and Luke are speaking from two different perspectives about varying and different aspects of this event called Jesus' birth and thereafter. They're not talking about, they're not looking at the same scene and trying to describe it, okay? They're looking at different perspectives of that scene. It's sort of like if you are, four, if there are four people on a corner and there's an accident. You're going to see it from different points of view and you're going to see different aspects. That's what's happening. And so when you try to make these two into one, you get some crazy stuff. Amen? Amen. You get shepherds. With, with these nice robes, you don't want to stand next to a shepherd. They stink. <laughs> Amen? And so, what I, but in Matthew's account, which, by the way, which is the only gospel account where you have the Magi, they, the Magi enter a house and find a child, a toddler. You can find it in Matthew, the second chapter, the 11th verse. Whereas when we're familiar with Luke's birth of Jesus, where you find Jesus born in a barn and laying in a manger. You find that in Luke, the second chapter and the seventh verse. They're not talking about the same thing. You see what I'm saying? And so when you try to match it all at the word, you get magi in the at a, a manger scene. Didn't happen. I know that there's folks that's about to jump out windows here and there. <laughs> but what I do love 
about the inclusion of the Magi in the Christmas story is that it is illustrative of something noted throughout scripture again and again. You see, the Magi were not Jewish. That's another surprise to a lot of folks. The Magi were not Jewish. They were actually Persians. From about 800, 900 miles east, which would today be Iran. The Magi came from Iran. <laughs> okay? Just, oh boy, I'm really missing y'all's Christmas story. <laughs> <laughs> But here's the beauty. These magi, non-Jewish, not Christian, because they were the such thing as Christians at the time, recognized who Jesus was and come to worship the Christ child as the Messiah. Now that fact alone, right there, if you stop, as I, I like to tell you, if you were good Pentecostals like we grew up, you'd run all over this place with that news. <laughs> that alone should tell you some good news about who God is and who God has always been and that those who God considers to be God's people is defined very differently than those we define as God's people out of our narrow-mindedness and our prejudices. We heard it in the assigned text this morning from Acts 10. Here's the situation. Peter's hungry. He's up on top of this building and he's hungry. And he has this vision. And the sheet is lowered by his four corners down from the heavens. And when he gets down to where he sees it, he looks over in and he sees all of this stuff. All of this goodies that a good Jew should just not eat. I mean, from Zadis and Center Point, you get smothered pork chops. <laughs> from Jim and Nick's, you get pork barbecue. From This Is It in Atlanta, my favorite restaurant in Atlanta, you get pig feet and chickens. Oh, oh Lord, have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Lord, over there, some fried squirrel and baked rabbit. Oh, praise the Lord. And then, Dr. don't mention the, the shrimps, the oysters, and the scallops. Lord, have mercy. What are we having for fellowship? I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and the instructions to Peter is, Peter, get up, kill, and eat. And self-righteous Peter said, oh, no, Lord. Not me. <laughs> Nothing unclean has ever entered these lips. Never have and never will. And God speaks to him and said, you twit. I mean, that, that's my version of what God said to him. <laughs> you little twit, how dare you? How dare you? Don't you ever call anything that I have made unclean. All right. All right. Well, I told you before it was a setup. God was setting Peter up for what was to come. Because right after this, Peter, this man, you know, this voice said, go down and stand on this corner, and somebody's going to come to you and get you, and you go with them. And so Peter goes down, and this man comes and gets him, and Peter is sent to this non-Jewish man's house who Peter considers by his religious beliefs and prejudices to be unclean. He sent to an unclean man's house to preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. That should tell the church something. If folks have to be clean before they come to church, then why do they need a church? Amen. Stop being so self-righteous in church. Remember when you put your finger three of them coming back at you. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. And so Peter goes to Cornelius' house. This man Peter considers unclean by his religious belief. And when he gets there, he's not very nice. About, I'm supposed to take the Peter's thing. He's not very nice about it. He said, you know I ain't supposed to be here at your house. <laughs> Isn't that a great way to go to somebody's house? Uh, you wouldn't want to go to Lula's house like that. <laughs> I warn you, it won't be pleasant. <laughs> As her cousin Jesse Parker said, oh, it'll be a bad day. 
It'll be a bad day if you're going to lose something like that. But anyway, Peter, I mean, Cornelius tell Peter about this vision he has and how while he was praying, God told him to send for Peter. And at that point, Peter responds from what Anna read this morning in those opening verses, Acts 10, chapter 34 and 35th verse. It says, I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every people, anyone who revere God, now your Bible may say fear. I'm saying revere here because that fear does not be there, does not mean be afraid, it means in awe or reverence. You can look it up for yourself. I said that one time that Pete actually looked it up. <laughs> and I was right, wasn't I, Pete? Yes. That's what it means. <laughs> All in reverence. <laughs> Leave it to a lawyer to go look it up. <laughs> but anyone, in every people, anyone who revere God and practice righteousness is acceptable to God. Now, every one of us should allow that truth of what Peter spoke so long ago when he gathered at Cornelius' house, to, we need to let that become our truth. We need to let that become our hope in 2023. We need to understand that our God shows no partiality. If you revere God, if you practice righteousness, God will be pleased with you and with the purposeful life that you Amen. live. Amen. Yes. Amen? Yes. You know, Isaiah 60 and 1 which was the assigned scripture for two days ago on the day of Epiphany, says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has shone upon you. Let me tell you something. When I revere God, when I practice righteousness, I'm a living witness that the light of God's love will come in your life, and the glory of God's favor will shine on you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that begs the question, what is righteousness? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> because, you know, church folks over-spiritualize that word, righteousness. We try to make it into something that's not. You know what it means? It simply means being in right standing with God. That's all righteousness means. Being in right standing with God. Holiness and righteousness is not the same thing. Holiness is about conduct. Righteousness is simply about being in right standing with God. And what it, if you really wanted to try to apply it to your life, it would mean consciously trying to live in the character and nature that you see the scriptures portray God. Trying to use the attitude of God that causes you to live out in your actions things that are pleasing to God. That's what that would mean. Does that make it better and make it clear to you? <clears throat> How does one do that? Again, I'm glad you asked. Because scripture tells us. You know, Micah, the sixth chapter and the eighth verse, speaks to this each issue of righteousness, of what it means, what it's like to be in right standing with God. Here's what it says from one translation. God has told you, human one, what is good and what God requires of you. To do justice, to love mercy, or embrace faithful love, and to walk humbly with your God. Is that that hard to understand? And if that ain't clear enough, Jesus himself speaks to us how about the way we live and can be in right standing with God. It's about living in obedience to the two greatest commandments. You don't have to remember all the laws of the Old Testament, even all this stuff they throw at you in church. All you got to remember is the two greatest commandments. You've heard it. I used to quote it from uh, John 13, but listen to it from Mark 12, the 30th and the 31st verse. Here it is. Love the Lord your God with all your heart with, and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. Amen. That's how you live in right standing with God. And so if we just live out the two greatest commandments, we live in righteousness. 
We live in right standing with God. On this baptism of our Lord Sunday, we need to realize baptism is one of the keys. Baptism is one of the keys. It's a great example. Jesus used baptism as his opening act, demonstrating obedience to prophecy and to God as he began his three and a half years of public ministry. God uses Jesus' baptism at that moment to affirm Jesus is right standing with the creator, the sovereign God of the universe. It says in Matthew uh, 3, the last two verses that Anna read this morning, and when Jesus was, had been baptized, just as Jesus came up out of the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to Jesus, and Jesus saw God's spirit descending like a dove and a light on him, and a voice came from heaven, said, this is my child, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. You know, as I was re reflecting on that this week, I considered baptism in a light I'd never thought about it before. You see, we know that God gives us free will. Every human being has free will. And having given us free will, God will not even violate that free will. You can't say the devil made you did it. <laughs> Or even God made you do it because you have free will. So perhaps, think of it this way. Perhaps baptism is a means in which God offers us the opportunity to publicly acknowledge we have been adopted as God's children. Amen. Why did I use that term adoption? Well, adoption is that process that makes a person a legal child of a parent. I've told you before that when Paul uses this term in Romans 8 uh, and other places in Romans, it's because Paul understood the implications of the word adoption. You know, but back during that time of Paul and Jesus, if you could disown your own child, did you know that? You could disown them. But if you adopted a child, you could not disown that child. It was so illegal that it carried a death penalty. You could disown your own child, but you couldn't disown an adopted child. Does that give you a clue where I'm going here? Let me tell you something. When we say yes to a relationship with God, and fellowship with Jesus Christ. It's that mo baptism, that moment that God says, affirms us that it's impossible for me to ever disown you. All right. All right. It's impossible. Baptism is that moment that gives God the opportunity to speak into your life and say, it is impossible for me to ever disown you. So again, it's a reminder that this relationship with God is God will never disown us. God does not take back anything God has ever given you. Amen. God already gave. Baptism is a public time to receive that affirmation. God can never disown you. When I start thinking about baptism in that way, what a wonderful way. What a wonderful thing to think of baptism as. And the apostle Peter tells us in, in the assigned text that Anna read this morning of Acts that everybody, everybody is welcome to experience this wonderful truth. Remember where this event occurred. It occurred at this non-Jewish night that people thought that Peter thought was unclean. That's where this, this episode is asking. And coming to this realization, having been sent there to preach the good news at Cornelius, a Gentile's house, and watching all those folks become Pentecostals, speaking in tongues, running aisles, jumping pews, scaring all the Baptists in the crowd. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
made Peter ask a question. Can anyone withhold the waters of baptism? These people, from these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. And so Peter ordered them to be baptized in the names of Jesus Christ. That's why this table is open to everyone. Who are you? I don't care what church you are to withhold the gift of God's grace Amen. to anyone, regardless of who they are. Amen? Amen. So, oh, I gotta get through. why not allow this wonderful truth of God, no partiality, to become your reality on this baptism of our Lord Sunday? God's not concerned with all the human-made traditions and doctrines folks make up to exclude people. God is not interested in you jumping through religious hoops to be accepted in a community of faith. God has no desire for all these religious nuts to have any control over your life. God is only concerned with the fact that you are my people and people need the Lord. I invite you to recognize that today. By saying yes or reaffirming the yes you've already made. And today, because I'm stopped up in, and we do things different because of the covenant, there's water in this baptismal. You get ready to leave today. If you feel a desire to do it, just dip your finger in it and put it on your forehead. Say, I'm publicly saying it's impossible. For God to ever disown me. That's right. Walk out here with your head held high That's right. like black women do when they strut in church on Sunday morning. <laughs> they don't walk in with their shoulders down. They get the girls up and strut in. <laughs> Am I lying? Amen. You walk out here like you own this world <laughs> because you do. Amen? Amen? The bottom line, it's impossible for God to ever disown you because simply God knows people need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, he's the open door. When will we realize? to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Before receiving communion, it is appropriate that we take a moment to confess those things that make us feel separated from God, that make us feel separated from others, and that make us feel separated from the best in ourselves. So would you go with me for a moment of personal confession?
that Jesus taught us praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, know that God has heard your confessions, and you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 It kind of makes sense that baptism is a way for us to be reminded that God gave that to us to remind us that we are adopted children of God and that he can never, ever deny that. Amen. Um, Amen. Just like this table, God gave us this table to remind us of his grace and his mercy, his love and his forgiveness. So it, it makes sense if you, when you look at it like that. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, Jesus shared a meal with his, with his disciples. And during that meal, he took bread, he gave thanks, and he blessed it. And he said, this is my body that will be given over to death for the forgiveness of sin and for life everlasting. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us eat. At the end of the meal, Jesus took the cup, and in giving thanks, he blessed it, and he passed it among them, and he said, Take and drink, for this is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. Each time that you drink of this cup, remember me, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us drink. to disown you, let's go out of here knowing you can depend on Jesus. Amen. 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 After me, may the, Lord may the Lord watch between, watch between me, and thee, me and thee while we're absent, while we're absent one, from the other. one from the other. Amen. Amen. Join us for fellowship. 